Today we're discussing the giants in South Africa's consumer foods industry, focusing on the strengths and weaknesses of Tiger Brands and Pioneer, Pioneer Foods. Let's look at the respective group's African expansion strategies. We already have noted that Tiger's recent deal in Nigeria, or well, they have a recent deal in Nigeria with Dangote, and that's in the flower space. So, Paul, uh, let's talk about that. I'm not so sure about Pioneer's Africa expansion strategy. Mm, well, it's not really particularly advanced. They mostly do the sort of manufacture here and then drop into those markets. Although obviously they've got some you know, very highly uh, regarded products and Bacoma has done some work there. But mm. Tiger really has led in this way uh, because some years ago they decided they weren't just going to do that. They were going to go and buy food producers in the east of Africa uh, and also in Zimbabwe they got stuck in and then in Cameroon and most recently as you say in Nigeria so I think it's a much more substantial strategy which is appropriate given their scale and I think it's positioning themselves to be a major competitor to some of the global multinationals like Unilever and Nestle which are obviously in these markets already. The strategy being mm. led quite aggressively by Peter McClary at mm. the helm of Tiger Brands. Mm. Well, I mean so so like Paul says Tiger Brands is just is the only company at the moment that is really developing operations on the ground. The rest of the guys are producing here and exporting. So they followed quite an aggressive acquisition strategy, the most recent of which being uh, Dangote Flower. Um, there, has, there has been some concern mentioned about the prices that they're paying for these assets. Some guys are saying it's a bit too, too much. Um, I think what is your opinion? Are you one of those guys? <laughs> <laughs> some guys. I think it's some people out there. Those guys out I think there. It's, uh, I think it's possible that some of the, some of the prices were, were quite meaty. I think, though, that at this point in the game, to get exposure to Africa, you have to pay up because it's extremely attractive. And, you know, if, you, if you're looking for bargains with using similar valuation metrics that you'd use for a local market like South Africa that, isn't, that doesn't have as much growth potential, you're going to find any price in Africa too expensive. So I think it's a bit of both. Mm. With the West African consumer at 160 million or yeah. so, you've got to give them the edge for no, I think that, that was well advantage. Put. But the trouble is, of course, you could buy a few toads along the way. I mean, uh, they're going to be difficulties. Dangote looked a bit strange, and that's because it's part of this, you know, um, multinational that Aliko Dangote has built up. It's a bit like Samsung uh, or those kaibols in Korea. You can't quite work out where the one starts and the other ends. Their intercompany financing arrangements, the taxes look a bit strange. But you know, as you say, you kiss Nigeria's enough toads, you're going to find your prince. <laughs> yeah. Could so be the swing already up bought for the some Africa rather strategy. interesting businesses. This thing called Davita, which was sort of Africa-based thing, worked well. But I think it's similar to Standard Bank going in and getting bank licenses. I really think you've got to get in and get stuck in. And I think they will take some of their branded portfolio here and take it to Nigeria and that's all good.